we're going to talk about some basic measuring tools that every woodworker needs, and that is a 12-inch combination square and a tape measure. You may also want a 6-inch combination square, and we use a compass just to uh, mark circles and curves. So the first two you're going to want are a 12-inch combination square and a tape measure, probably a 12-foot or a 15-foot. The combination square is for laying out all of your joints and checking for accuracy after you've cut them. Your square must be square and the ruler should meet the head at 90 degrees. The first thing you want to do when you buy a combination square is to check that it is square and there's an easy way to do that. Take a pencil with you to the store, take a board or find an offcut in the section over by the lumber. There's usually a bin full of stuff that people have left behind. Lay it on a flat surface. Choose the straighter edge of the board, usually with lumber at the big box store, one edge is square. And just mark a line. Take the square, flip it over, show it to the line that you just marked. And if it's not square to that line, you know you've got a problem. Hang this one back on the rack and go pick up another one and check again. Then, after you've made sure that your square is square, you want to go buy a tape measure. And this is going to sound strange, but sometimes the tape measures don't match the scale on the square or vice versa. And you also want to make sure that the marks on both are clean and easy to read. Sometimes when they're uh, printed on there, they get fat and it's hard to mark things accurately off of that. So, you take your tape measure and you show it to the square and you make sure that the inch marks line up. And again, you want to make sure that they're easy to read and that the lines go all the way to the edge. If they don't, again, it's going to be hard to mark your work. Then there's one more thing I want to check. I want to make sure that I have uh, eighths marked, that I have sixteenths marked, and that's usually as far down as I go in measurements, but if you need them, make sure you have 30 seconds and 64ths over here. I don't think I've ever measured down to a 64th, but I'm not an engineer, so I wouldn't want to. Now, a lot of these also have a bubble level in them, and they have a scribe in the end that you can pull out and use. You'll never use that bubble level, and as you can see, the scribe gets easily lost, although I do think I have one on my six inch square here, just to show you, but I've never used it. I use a pencil for marking most things, or I'll use a marking knife. Um, so if it doesn't have those two features, you really don't need to worry about it. And then when you're talking about your tape measures, same with the ruler here, you want to make sure that you have sixteenths and possibly thirty seconds, or whatever you need to measure. Um, obviously one inch is half inches, quarter inch and eighth. The other thing is when you go to the hardware store, you're probably going to find some 25 and 50 foot rulers or uh, tape measures. You don't actually need those for cabinet work. Those are better for when you're working on your house. Now they'll laugh at you on a construction site if you show up with a 12 foot ruler, but that's really all you need. You also want to check the standout on it, which isn't a big deal for furniture work. And standout means how far you can extend it before it crumples on you, and I'm at about three feet here. It's probably going to break there, but that's fine for the kind of work we're doing in the shop. And there's two other things to check before you decide on your tape measure. You want to make sure that it locks and unlocks easily. And then you also want to look at the tab on the end. A lot of people will try to peen these down so that it stays in place, and that's the last thing you want to do, actually, because you need this to move. It should move in and out the width of the metal piece here, because if you're marking on the end of a board, that's your zero point on the inside. If you're marking on the inside of something, your zero point is on the outside. So you need this to move in and out just that amount. There's two more tools that you might want to pick up if you can't steal them out of your kid's school box, and that's a compass and a mechanical pencil. I prefer mechanical pencils because you don't have to stop and sharpen them, and the line that it marks is a lot finer than what you'll get with, say, the pencil that's in the compass here. So it just looks a little neater, it's a little bit easier to follow, less fuzzy. Um, you probably know how to use a compass, but just in case, you set the point, the center point, 
and you set the pencil using a ruler. So I'm going to set this to two inches, so that's a two inch radius. It's going to describe or mark a four inch wide circle, four inch diameter circle. And why would I want a compass? Well, if I want to put a curve on the end of a board, and I really should have set this to half the width of the board that I'm using here. And that's pretty close, so we'll just play with that. And if you put this in the center here, you can mark a half circle around the edge there, and then you've got a cut line. And that's really it for the marking and measuring tools that you need as a beginning woodworker. Obviously, as I said, there's a lot more out there, and as your skills grow, you'll find that you need to buy more. But this is a great starter set, and you can build a lot of stuff just using these four tools. Mm -hmm.